Okay guys, so in this video, let's see that how do we display data inside our recycler view that is the products inside this shop recycler view. And currently if we run our application, we'll be seeing an empty screen because we haven't set the products inside our recycler adapter that is the list adapter. So let's do that. So firstly, what we are going to do, we are going to open our shop view model because from the shop view model, we are going to create a method that is get products and that would returns us uh, live data and which we will observe inside our shop fragment and then from the shop fragment we will set the list accordingly inside our list adapter. So firstly let's create the method here inside our shop view model and that method should be called get products and this method should return live data for a, of a list of products. So public it should be public live data and the type would be a list of products like this and now let's call this method get products like this and here we want to return something that is we want to return live data here of a list of products so now what we can do we can either make an api call here itself and then we can set the product lists inside our live data but instead what we are going to do since we have a shop repo we are going to do all the api calls that is all the business logic inside the shop repo class so let's open the shop repo class here. So either you are using room database or you are using retrofit or you are using any other method to load data inside your application you should do inside a repository class. So here firstly what we want to have we want to have a list of products that is a mutable live data. So let's create that first. So private mutable live data and the type would be list of product like this and this should be called mutable product list so mutable product list like this and let me make this font size a bit smaller and here we'll create another method whose return type would be again live data so let me create a method here that is public live data and its type would be list of product like this and we'll again call it get products like this and here firstly we'll check if mutable product list is equal to null that is when we are calling this method if the mutable product list is null then we are going to set the mutable product list to be equal to new mutable live data so mutable product list equal to new mutable live data like this and then we'll call another method that is load products like this and this method we are going to create and then finally what we want to do we want to return this mutable product list like this and now we need to create this method that is load products and it should be a private method that is private to this class so private load products like this and it should be void here that is private void load products and here you are going to make an api call to get the products that is to get the list of products and when you have the list of products so let's suppose we have a list here that is list of product and product list equal to new array list like this and then finally you are going to make an api call here and you are getting the product list from your api or from your room database and then finally what you want to do you want to set the product list to this mutable product list and then finally you will say mutable product list dot set value and the value would be this product list like this so now this thing is complete though we have to enter some fake data here but let's go to our shop view model and inside our shop view model what we want to return simply here we want to simply call this method inside the shop repo class that is get products so for that i am going to initialize my shop repo class right away at the very top here that is shop repo uh, shop repo equal to new shop repo like this and we need to import this class and again it's angry because this class should be public because it's from another package so public class shop repo the errors are gone and now finally what we want to do we want to get a reference to the shop repo and then we simply call get products and now what is happening here is this that since this method expects a return type of live data we are returning here shop repo dot get products which is which is again a type of live data as we can see in the shop repo class that this get products is again live data and now 
finally what will happen is this that whenever someone calls this method or whenever someone observes this method that is get products so it will return this shop report or get products and it will come here and it will see that it calls this method so it will return mutable product list which is of type of mutable live data and since in live data we can return mutable live data therefore we are returning mutable product list so here let's add some products to this product list so here we will say product list dot add and here we want to add a new product so new product like this and here we need to pass in these arguments that is the id the name the price is available or not and the image url so let me pass those things here and for the id i'm generating a random uuid so uuid dot random uuid and finally we need to say dot to string here like this and then the name of the product so let's call it imac 21 like this the price of the product so the price is a double so we can pass in 12.99 like this and is available or not whether the product is available or not we'll say true that the product is available and then finally we want to pass in the url of the image so let me copy one url and let me paste it here like this so now we see that we have added one product to our product list so now let's add some more products to this product list so let me copy the product list from my second screen and let me copy it from here so let me copy and let me paste it here so let me minimize it so here we see that i have added some more products to my product list and finally at the end we are saying that mutable product list dot set value equal to product list though you can set the value of the product list inside a callback also that is if you are making an api call or something like this or if you are using async task or if you are using a loader or if you are using concurrent list so you can do that very easily by setting the pro new product list inside this mutable product list and now we are returning that product list that is this mutable product list from this shop view model so now let's go inside a shop fragment and here we want to initialize the shop view model so at the very top firstly let's initialize the uh, let's declare the shop view model so private shop view model and shop view model like this and let me also import it and again it's angry because we need to make this class public because it's from a different package so it should be a public class so the error must be gone and now inside this on view created we we'll initialize the shop view model so after setting the adapter we'll say shop view model equal to new view model provider new view model provider so here we need to pass in the owner and for the owner we can pass in the activity so for to get the active we can simply say require activity dot get and here we can pass in the shop view model class that is shop view model dot class like this and now finally what we'll do we'll say shop view model dot get product dot observe like this and here we need to pass in the lifecycle owner and the observer so for the lifecycle owner we can simply say get view lifecycle owner so get view lifecycle owner comma new observer like this and now we see that we are observing the list of products so finally inside this thing what we can do we can simply say shop list adapter dot submit list and here we can simply submit the list that is the products here that is this product list so now i hope that uh, if we run our application we'll be seeing the products inside our recycler view so let's run this application again and let's go back here to our application and let's wait for a couple of seconds okay so now we see two of our products here and the images are same and we are only seeing two products because if we scroll down we can see that we have all our products that we have inside the repo so all the products are there but we are getting this uh, thing here that is the linear layout should be wrapped because i think the height is match parent so let's fix that so let's open the shop row here and let's go to the root layout that is the linear layout and the layout how it should be wrap content like this so let's again run this application and this time we'll be seeing the items as in a grid view so we can see the items here but the images are not different and that is because we haven't created a binding adapter for the image view so let's uh, fix that 
So now to create the binding adapter for your image view, let's go to, go to the product model here and here we'll create a binding adapter that is to load the image from the URL. So here I'll create a static method that is public public static. Let me increase the font size public static void load image and here it takes in two arguments the image view and the image URL. So image view it would be view or let's call it image view and the URL would be of type of a string. So string image URL like this and then here what we'll do we'll simply say glide dot width and the view we need we need to pass here that is the image view and then we need to load the image URL so we can simply say load and the image URL is passed as a parameter here that is load image URL and then we'll adjust the fit by using fit center that is fit center and then we can say into image view that is the image view we want this image to be loaded into and now we need to annotate this method by doing so that is at binding adapter like this and here we need to provide in a string name for this uh, method to be used inside our xml file and here we'll say android product image and you can name this thing anything you like i am calling it product image and now let's go to the shop row here and now let's use that uh, method which we just created so here what we'll say let's go to the image view here and here we'll say android product image should be equal to and here we need to pass in the url and we can get the url from the product itself so we can say at product dot image url like this since this product contains an image url and now it will load the image inside this so now let's run this application and i hope that it will work and we'll be seeing different images for different projects so now the images are loading i hope and yes they are loading and we can see different images for different products so now what we want to have we want to have a divider between these uh, this grid view so that is pretty simple to do let's go to our shop uh, fragment here and here what we need to do we need to simply say fragment shop winding dot shop recycler view dot add item decoration and here it would be a new divider item decoration and here we need to pass in the context and we can simply pass in the context by doing require context and the orientation would be vertical and we also want a horizontal divider so again we will do the same thing that is fragment shop winding dot shop recycler adapter dot add item decoration new divider item decoration and the context would be require context and the orientation this time would be horizontal because we want both horizontal and vertical dividers so let's run this application again and let's go back to our application so this time we'll be seeing the horizontal and vertical dividers inside the grid view so now we can see the dividers here accordingly okay so this is done so the last thing i want to do in this video is change the title according to the fragment in which we are so currently it displays the application name that is a shopping cart but instead we want to display here shop because we are inside the shop fragment so let's fix that so let's go to our application here and here let's open the navgraph here so navgraph.xml and here for the shop fragment as we can see that this is the shop fragment and here we have a label that says fragment shop so let's see how to implement this label inside our inside the action bar so for that we need to open main activity and here what we need to do so here firstly we need to find the nav controller so let's declare the nav controller here so nav controller nav controller and then inside the on create what we want to do we want to say nav controller equal to navigation dot find nav controller and here we need to use this method that is with the activity and the view id the activity would be this activity and the view id would be the id of the nav host fragment so we'll say r dot id dot nav host fragment because this is the id of the nav nav host fragment inside our main activity as you can see here this is the nav host fragment and the id is nav host fragment so let's go to the main activity again like this and finally what we need to do we need to say 
navigation UI dot setup action bar with nav controller like this and here we need to pass in the activity and the activity would be this and the nav controller would be the nav controller that we just initialized like this so let's run this application and this time we'll be seeing fragment shop here instead of shopping cart depending upon the fragment in which we are so we see that we are getting fragment shop so let's rename these labels here inside the nav graph so let's go to the nav graph here so for the shop fragment we want to display shop so let's write shop here inside the label thing here and then for the product detail fragment we simply want to display product detail like this and then for the cart fragment we'll simply say cart here and then for the order fragment we'll simply say order like this and now all the four fragments have their separate labels and that would be displayed inside the action bar so let's run this application once again and this time we'll be seeing shop here so we are getting shop here 